Hello info person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss what seems to be one of the most, if not the most bizarre gravitational wave detections that was just officially confirmed in 2025 and currently somewhat difficult to explain. And here we're talking about a detection of a collision from two really strange, somewhat massive and fast spinning black holes that nobody has ever expected to exist and that technically should not even exist based on modern theories of cosmology. Yet they do seem to exist and they did seem to collide, producing gravitational waves officially detected on November 23rd, 2023, but officially confirmed basically just now. And so let's discuss exactly what this means, what researchers believe might have happened here, and of course why this still doesn't really make a lot of sense. Although I guess just a brief review. Here we're talking about gravitational waves or the ripples of space-time itself. Originally predicted to exist by Albert Einstein, who also did not believe we would ever find them, simply because they're just a little bit too weak. And that's because these waves are really really tiny in terms of amplitude they can barely move even a single atom. Yet despite Einstein's skepticism, in 2015 they were officially confirmed to exist when LIGO detected the first ever collision, which resulted in a Nobel Prize in 2017. And to date, over 300 detections have already been discovered, with over 200 discovered in just the last few months. And that's because what started as LIGO is now a major international collaboration referred to as LIGO Virgo CAGRA. It basically involves an American, a European, a Japanese, and soon to be added Indian detectors. And it was this particular collaboration that now discovered what seems to be an extremely rare type of a black hole and something that nobody expected. Here this detection is now known as GW231123. And what we seem to have in this case are two impossible black holes. Impossible because of their initial mass. One of them is approximately 137 solar masses, the other one is 103. And this is essentially in what's known as the mass gap when it comes to black hole masses. An important theoretical gap when it comes to masses of stellar black holes predicted by a lot of different models when it comes to stellar evolution. And that's because we actually expect that as the mass of a star increases, and as it's about to go supernova, some stars become so massive that instead of producing black holes, they basically just explode completely, leaving nothing behind. These are known as pair instability supernova, and we've discussed them in some of the videos in the description, and we've also observed some of them in nature. And these types of supernova can only happen in stars whose mass is anywhere from 130 to maybe 250 solar masses, implying that certain masses of black holes should be completely impossible. Basically a black hole with a mass of about 100 solar masses should technically not happen. Although intriguingly, when a star gets even more massive, instead of producing supernova, it can completely collapse into a black hole directly. And these direct collapse black holes have also been observed and will usually produce black holes very likely over 135 solar masses in mass. And so we can have relatively massive black holes or relatively small black holes, but nothing in between. Yet here researchers discovered two black holes whose masses are approximately 100 and 140 solar masses, which by itself is of course very difficult to explain. They're literally inside this upper mass gap and their origins are extremely difficult to explain. And in the end they produced a black hole that's even more massive, with the final mass of 225 solar masses, which is almost double of the previous record holder discovered in 2019. This one was about 142. And this of course challenges our current understanding of black hole formation and the origin of certain types of black holes. But it doesn't actually invalidate anything and it does not present us with challenges we cannot explain. It just makes it slightly more difficult to explain, because here we do have at least some explanations. The more obvious explanation is that there might still be some kind of a calculation error. And that's because these black holes are also spinning ridiculously fast, as confirmed by additional calculations and the observations of additional reading of these black holes as they collided, scientists revealed that they were basically spinning at about 80% and 90% of the possible limit, which is something like 400,000 times the rotation of planet Earth. 
And as a result of this spin, they do introduce a lot of uncertainty into their total mass, and so there's a chance that they might be a lot less massive. But at the moment, the most advanced analysis still suggests that these are indeed mass gap black holes, with the combined mass of over 200 solar masses. And so because the original black holes fall into the mass gap, they are unlikely to have been produced through regular means. But in this case, maybe it's that spin that essentially hints at their origin. Because for black holes to acquire such a high spin, well, we need to have maybe two things. Usually, stellar mass black holes start to spin rapidly due to the consideration of angular momentum during their formation. And so if a really, really massive, very large star collapses, as it becomes smaller and smaller, its core starts to spin faster and faster as well. And so if these black holes were formed by really, really massive stars spinning relatively fast and collapsing directly instead of going supernova, there is maybe one way to explain their origin. Alternatively, extremely fast spin can also be acquired by infoing matter. And so if both of these black holes somehow gain their mass by accreting matter from surrounding gas and clouds, they could have actually grown really massive over time by eating huge amounts of matter from something, like some kind of a dust or maybe a nearby star, for billions of years. And so here, one of the potential answers to their origin could be determined if we can figure out why they're spinning so fast. But because the signal in this case was very complex and very difficult to analyze, it's quite likely that this is just going to remain a kind of a mystery for quite some time. Mostly because the Einstein's equations when it comes to black holes are extremely difficult to solve when objects are spinning super fast. And that actually reduces the overall accuracy quite dramatically. But there's actually at least one explanation that most scientists seem to accept right now. And it's referred to as the hierarchical origin story. The idea that some of these black holes might have actually been formed from previous collisions of much smaller binaries. Or basically that some of these black holes are actually the result of at least one but maybe even multiple collisions, which eventually produce larger and larger black holes and eventually create these elusive intermediate mass black holes. This would also actually explain the very high spin and would obviously explain their high mass. But there's a slight problem with this explanation, or I guess maybe an extremely big problem. The problem being that in order for these multiple collisions to occur, and in order for us to be able to observe them so quickly, there is just not enough time in the entire universe yet. And that's because we expect one of these collisions to happen maybe every few billion years, but in order for several of these collisions to happen, we need at least 100 billion years or even longer. The universe is technically not old enough to produce these hierarchical origin stories. And so for many years now, researchers have actually been struggling to explain why we're seeing so many of these intermediate mass black holes and how this is possible. And right now, the best explanation that researchers seem to have is in regards to where this is being observed. There's an extremely high chance that most of these collisions, or possibly even all of these collisions, seem to only happen very close to supermassive black holes. Or just to rephrase this, a typical supermassive black hole is going to contain a lot of these smaller black holes orbiting all over the place. And because there are so many of them in different locations, quite a few of them end up colliding and producing larger and larger black holes over time. And so what we're actually seeing is the result of a collision very close to a supermassive black hole and not a typical binary star in a different part of a galaxy. And if this is what we're seeing, it would explain why so many collisions have been observed in just the last few years, it would explain intermediate mass black holes, and it would of course explain the overall high spin. But in order to confirm this, all of this would have to be first localized with extreme precision. Or basically, researchers would have to find a way to locate the exact position inside the galaxy to see if this is happening somewhere in the center, or maybe this is actually happening somewhere entirely different. Like, for example, maybe this is inside some kind of a globular cluster, where the overall density of ancient stars is extremely high. And so trying to figure out how we can locate the exact position of these collisions will actually help us explain what's happening. At the moment, because these signals are kind of weak and also extremely fast, and also because we just don't have enough detectors on the planet yet, it's somewhat difficult to localize this directly. But in this case, researchers also suggest that maybe there could be some additional, more exotic explanations, mostly because these two black holes are just still a little bit too strange. And so here researchers also consider other possible burst-like sources, such as, for example, exotic compact objects, or maybe even mysterious cosmic strings. And that's because this unusual ring-down that usually follows the black hole collision 
can also be mimicked by various waveforms from collapsing cosmic strings. And here just to clarify, cosmic strings are not the same strings proposed by this string theory, and instead are these hypothetical objects believed to exist since the beginning of the universe that would actually represent almost like cracks in the universe itself. You can learn more about this in one of the older videos in the description. Although here the observations can also be explained by a collision of something super exotic, maybe boson stars, which can also produce a very similar explosion and a very similar gravitational wave. And so right now none of these explanations are ruled out because they can technically still be possible. But at the moment the researchers behind this recent study still believe that the black hole explanation is potentially the best. According to them it just has a slightly higher astrophysical probability. Nevertheless, whatever this collision was, it's definitely one of the most, if not the most exciting collisions detected in the last decade, and will very likely lead to a lot of new studies, a lot of propositions and explanations, and eventually new understanding of the entire universe and how everything seems to work. At the moment this detection is still super mysterious, but hopefully in the next few years we'll get some answers, possibly even more detections similar to this one explaining what's going on, and possibly at least one explanation that almost everyone agrees with. But until these future studies, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos in the description, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, maybe join the channel membership where you get early access and some other videos, or support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.